everybody. Very special announcement. We have another giveaway coming. Everyone's been waiting for it here. Yes. We've just reached the uh, the 1K sub mark pretty recently here, and we're doing a bit of a giveaway. By a bit, I mean we're giving away we more than we usually do. We got uh, I mean it's a special mile, a special milestone. You gotta do it. Yeah, we got. We see. This is a special mile. 1K. Uh, we didn't. You know, we weren't expecting any of this. We were just two random guys playing some games, talking about random shit that we didn't know if anyone would actually want to listen to. And here we are. Yep. Uh, we are going to be rolling off some prizes. So let's let's show everyone what they're potentially winning here. So on my side, we have two beautiful sets. Well, you're going to be rolling for one of these sets. So the Herald of Rebirth uh, Extended Art, the Rainbow Foils mm -hmm. here. One so of each, each roll would be pitch. One of each color. Yep. One of each color. So three cards total. There will be a Cold Foil Icelander and a Cold Foil Genus. I don't know if the screen captures that very well. So one <laughs> roll will be for both of those. So both of those cold foils. And then we're going to have a cold foil crazy brew alt art. Look at that. Beautiful. That's a beautiful one. and crazy. Uh, Rob, what, what do you got for the fans here? Yeah, so we've got three of the alternate art Boneyard Marauders here from, I believe, Team Covenant. Uh, yeah, so one Team winner Covenant. will get all three of these. I then have a rainbow foil Katsu from my collection here to be given off. Uh, pretty nice card there. Uh, additionally, one rainbow foil Azalea for all you Ranger fans. And last but not least, or hopefully not, we've got one of our First. Spark of Genius playmats that we will be giving away. We've gotten some you know, requests for people who wanted to buy these, and we figured let's just put it in a giveaway uh, for anyone yep. to win. So yeah, that's, that's it so for me. Yeah, all you got to do to win, very, very simple. You have to like, comment, and subscribe on any of the videos with, uh, with this intro uh, onto it. For the comments, all we need to hear from you is, you know, we've been doing this uh, a little while, almost, uh, you know, quite a long time, almost a year, not actually even close to a year. Eight, but eight months? For a while, about eight months now. So <laughs> what kind of video do you want to see us making in the future? This could be more of the same, more of our CC videos, Classic Constructed Blitz, mm -hmm. our POV drafts, Tech -techs. discussion videos, deck text, whatever. What do you want to see us make more of, whether we've made any of it or not? Let us know down in the comments for any of the videos. We will be posting this for probably probably the month of August. And when the month of August is up, we will be doing the rolls in September. And with that, appreciate everyone for watching. Are you continue to support from the bottom of both of our hearts? We really do appreciate it. With that, have a great day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Spark of Genius Flesh and Blood Productions. We haven't done an interview in quite a while. I think the last interview we did was, oh my god, I don't even remember, it was months ago or something like that. Martin, but I think. Uh, it might have been Martin, I think. It might have been Martin back in ago. the European, yeah, that was back at the European <laughs> calling, I think. So here we have Jason. The calling just finished here in Singapore. I say here, it's obviously I'm not in yeah, Singapore. Yeah, we're, we're Jason, was, Jason was in Singapore. <laughs> Man, Jason was in Singapore. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was, and he he ended up winning the whole thing because he, you know, he's got to get value out of that trip, and we got to get value out of his opinion. So that's why we're here. Also, uh, of course, introducing my co-creator, co-commentator, co-caster, co-compatriot Rob. Hello. And we have Jason here winning on <laughs> of all of our favorite heroes, right? Dash, of course, uh, the channel is <laughs> Park of Genius. It, it'd be a crime yep. not to have him on. To Mascot of the channel. <laughs> mascot of the channel it's on our mat it's on our logo it's on everything here so jason you know welcome to the channel here we will uh we'll just be talking for all the viewers we'll talk a little bit about kind of uh jason's viewpoint about you know testing for the events um kind of some strategies for different matchups and then like a little bit more specific about some of the games because i know i know a lot of people had uh, they probably weren't expecting dash in top eight mm -hmm. period let alone to win the thing right so we're going to be we're gonna po poke it a little bit about that and see kind of what what made her tick for the for this particular event. So I'll I'll, um, I'll hand it off to Rob to kind of start off with the first couple of questions. Perfect. So I'll be tackling a few of the questions from the pre-event kind of stuff. So testing wise, uh, the first one I have is: Were you testing or deciding between multiple different decks for the event, uh, and then which ones and why? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So a little bit about me and my experience in Flesh and Blood. Uh, I, I am actually a, a one-trick dash player, <laughs> nice. and ever since I started playing, uh, to like every big event, I, I will always bring that dash no matter what. So die-hard dash so fan, I like it. <laughs> it was, 
it was it was it was very likely that that I was going to bring Dash. I, I took her to uh, Pro Tour, Pro Quest, everything, uh, different iterations, aggro, control, mm-hmm. or defensive, whatever you like to call it. <laughs> Who knows what they're calling? Well, actually, I do know what they're calling it now. It's interesting. Yep. It's the one. Um, right? <laughs> but yeah, I've always been playing Dash. There there was a there was a small chance I was I was going to bring Fi okay. to be honest. Um, because I was having fun with Ninja, I like I like drawing cards. Dash doesn't like drawing cards that, as much, unfortunately. Um, but but I, I felt like after thinking about it, the the Dash deck that I might have might have good matchups, and I was already pretty comfortable with that deck anyway. Awesome. And so, how did you approach testing then for this event? Were you leaning more towards an aggro style or more of a control style, and and why'd you make that decision? Um, so. Okay, um, I, I was going to lead a little bit more towards aggro, but I didn't really want to play the aggro decks that other people were playing. I feel like, you know, it's a calling. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't play that many callings. If I, if I really wanted to feel like I have a really good chance, I have to, like, I have to gamble and then pick something that I think, you know, might have a good matchup against the most common decks. And, and ever since Starville has left, I thought that the aggro dash might be able to, to race the, the other type of aggro decks. Which uh, I guess I guess I got lucky in it, and it looks like it did uh, race the others pretty well. Uh, so that's basically what happened. Sometimes I, I play like a, a, a very control uh, style of deck, and that's when Starvo was there, and he had mm. hit effects that just loot. I think I you, cannot you had to ever. at that point. Yeah, there was no option. I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's not here anymore, so so I decided to give Agro back uh, a chance, and then and then you know we can talk about the sideboard for for other things later. Yeah. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. Do you have any questions, Eric, that you want to top off to that? Or? <laughs> no, it kind of makes sense. I remember like trying Dash into Star Road. It's just kind of, it's just so sad. It's just yeah. so hard to like prevent, especially if they go off. It's just, you can't really do much. You have, da- Dash can play, I feel like she can play control, but she's just not like as geared towards, like she doesn't have her own like mechanologist D react, or she doesn't yeah. really have like those unique. Or like an ability that just helps you, like old him, that just helps you just be more control. So I felt like, yeah, into Starvo was really tough, just in general, into that matchup doing well. So it kind of makes sense that he's gone. You took a bit more of a. She, she makes a lot more sense as an aggro deck. Your cards literally say "go again" on them, right? So uh, it it's it definitely kind of makes sense from that regard. Perfect. So going into this event, did you have any specific goals in mind for maybe topping eight or winning the event? Did, was that one of your goals, uh, or was it mainly just to go and have some fun with your favorite hero? Oh, <laughs> I mean, I understand that there's there's a lot of competitors and there's some really really like strong competitors, and 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 with with the this type of format, I know that you know there's going to have to be. A, a reasonable amount of, of good fortune that has to come your way to do well. So I, I don't go in uh, expecting expecting much at all. Um, just have some fun and and um, don't worry about try to EV of anything. I know that the only the best positive EV is all the of the, the social EV that you'll get because uh, I always meet great people at these types of events. They're always fun and and this one especially was was amazing. Like once I got in close to the top eight, like all like at least six seven of us. From the top eight, we're like still chilling and talking about all random oh, nice. stuff, and, and I'd have to make the comparison. Like when I was at the pro tour, like once you got to like the higher tables, uh, it was really tense, and and some didn't want to talk at all, mm-hmm. and and some were playing cards and they didn't want to say anything at all, and <laughs> it was much yeah. different than this. So so I had a great time here. Nice. It's great to hear that great the atmosphere was a lot so more jovial, a lot more like uh, oh, kind of. A bit more chill. Uh, I was at the Pro Tour also. I wasn't at the top tables or anything. I was just playing the calling. But I remember that the atmosphere was a little different. I know Eric played the main. No, event. even <laughs> no, even at the even in the earlier rounds when I was like in day one when I was at the top table, like right before my stream game, and I was like just chilling at the top tables, and like you could recognize so many of the faces, and everyone's got like such a serious stoic. Either it's either serious or bored because they're like playing Bravo <laughs> or playing against Bravo, it's and true. everyone like knows what's gonna happen. <laughs> so everyone at the top tables is like, "Are you on Bravo?" No. Okay. Okay, I'm on Bravo. Or, or, or yeah, like, that, oh, you're on Shade? Oh, I'm on Shade. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's literally the That was my favorite conversation. <laughs> that was my yeah. favorite conversation. Like, what are you playing? Oh, I'm playing Dash. Wow, that's so interesting. Finally, yeah, like, that's, something that's else. Unique. And then I ask, what are you playing? Oh, I'm playing Starbo. Right. I'm like, oh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah, it's definitely nice. To, I agree with Rob. It's nice to hear the calling is definitely a little bit more take take it aback, right? Yeah. It's, uh, more. Uh, and and a little bit of fun thing. I was just checking this morning. Like, if you were worried about EV, <laughs> I, I noticed in the prize pool, it's so generous by this company that if it was two hundred sixty one players and and it was like sixty US dollars for the entry, it was actually positive EV to do it. Hey. If you exclude the PTI and the cold foils, it was like, and if you just like randomly pick a, a winner from you know. It was yeah. actually positive. Wow, like, wow, that's I, rare. I that. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it doesn't include flights and stuff. But right, I mean, it was. It's such a great. It's, experience. it's a vacation. I, yeah, it's a vacation. Don't worry about it. It is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so I've got one more question for you for the prep side. Um, did you prepare any specific strategies for matchups that you thought you were going to see a lot, namely the Rune Blades, Fi, uh, Guardian would be a big one, or Prism? Right. Right, so so I was I was hoping to bring I, I was thinking you know if, if I was going to bring Dash it's going to be aggro or control so I have to kind of think what are the most popular decks I'm going to expect to see and and usually if it's Guardian then I'm expecting to see a lot the control is is extremely strong into into that mm -hmm. uh, very high win rates uh, I was expecting unfortunately a little bit more aggro and and the control kind of doesn't do as well against aggro so i was just hoping that you know if i go aggro can i can i at least get like a little bit more than a 50 50 from that and mm -hmm. i felt like i felt like if i was just going to go psycho aggro uh like like a complete maniac maybe i can do it with a little bit of help and luck um so that's what i ended up doing and 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 if i and unfortunately with that matchup if i do run into a guardian i might be really in trouble but that's where that sideboard really comes in mm -hmm. um, Awesome. So we'll go into the main event questions. Eric, I'll hand it off to you. Yeah, no, fair enough. So I mean, we'll, we'll kind of we'll kind of start off cuz we didn't we didn't see you in any of the Swiss games. I think I, li I literally watched every single one of the Swiss games on day 1, day 2. Hmm. A lot of it was draft to be fair. So it's not really the same the same kind of idea. Um, hmm. but like going into for I'll just I'll just ask you very cuz obviously you did you had to do well in draft top 8. Like you could have just like ignored draft. Um, so this is a bit of, bit of an off the cuff question. How do you, how do drafts go? How did your day one and day two draft? Just just very that's, briefly, like that's uh, really interesting. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to go brief. Um, it's a, it was a really <laughs> interesting format. Um, it had a lot of variants, right? Um, all, all all I can definitely say is that all the people that ended up like towards the top of CC, it wasn't as many matches at CC as people might expect, but those were the players who like three owed their drafts or three owed their drafts twice. Mm -hmm. Right, so they're still they're good players, right? Um, the draft did add a lot of variance because I don't practice draft as much because it's not always the cheapest thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, to be honest, the the scariest part of the whole event was probably that first draft, and mm -hmm. and um, my pod was was extremely extremely strong as I later learned because uh, the three people who went 2-1 and the one that went 3-0, we all ended up day two with a 4-0 CC record, Ooh. which we all found out. Oh, like, oh pot 12, we're all here. Team pot 12 is all <laughs> here. I, like, oh. <laughs> I guess the tiebreakers must be good. But uh, <laughs> I think that that first draft, um, I really wanted to go drill my, uh, and the only other drill my draft there was directly to my right, which I found out like at pick three. So I had to switch to someone else. And what ended up happening is I think six out of the seven of us, of us were not so happy with our decks. And then the Dromai kind of crushed us all. I was very close to a 1-2. If you, if you start that draft with a 1-2, because it's the first three rounds, um, you are almost guaranteed out of the top mm -hmm. eight, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Unless you, if, if with one loss, you probably will, would be out of the top eight mm -hmm. in CC. So, so very, very uh, high risk there. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, that's that's how the that's how the first day draft. I, I barely squeaked out a two one. Uh, I was very close mm -hmm. to a one two, Phew. and if I did, I I probably be out. Um, uh, on day two, I just forced Dromai because I thought nobody wants to play Dromai. So <laughs> that's a fair uh, assumption. Of... <laughs> <laughs> you, you heard it here first. That's just forced Dromai. That's what nobody wants to play. That's Dromai. what I. That's what I learned on day one. I was like, nobody wants to play Dromai. The only other Dromai was like two to three seats to my left. So <laughs> it worked out really well. That's fantastic. Okay. Well, lucky again. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. So going into. Top eight. Uh, I believe you were you were kind of like in the middle in the middle seed for four or five. I think one of the, one of those two. Um, 
So how did how did you feel knowing that literally? So there's four other Briar players, right? There's there's uh, I think a lot of them probably the lists were extremely similar too. When you actually mm. look, there's like three cards difference, maybe if that. They're very very similar lists. Uh, were you kind of relieved about it? Were you worried about it? Uh, there's that one Icelander player that kind of dodged all the prisms that, that, that kind of got in there with probably some good drafts <laughs> and good luck there. Uh, how, what, were, what were your thoughts about like seeing the top eight field? Uh, to be honest, I was a little relieved because I was at least comfortable with mm-hmm. those matchups and I've played with them. I've actually, I, I would like to, I wouldn't want to say but I, I would like to have practiced against some of the newer heroes than I really did. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so that Icelander did worry, Bill, because I didn't really have a great plan. I was just going to have to take a guess and, and see what happens mm. and, and hope for the best if, if that was my matchup. Uh, and I know that Icelander player is really strong. <laughs> I just met him. He's, uh, he's a YouTuber. It's pretty cool. Um, the There was a little bit of concern about the Briar because the only CC game I did lose the entire event was against the Briar. Mm. Um but but uh, yeah, I've played against Viscerai before uh, and Five before. I, I I feel like I was like bef- going just going to the event. I know that this deck is pretty favored against Five, um, and 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 against the other Rune Blades, like it's getting closer to fifty fifty, maybe like a little bit more on me. It depends on you know how, how they play or what they decide to do or what their hands are. So so overall, I felt pretty content. Not not too worried, uh, except yep. for the Icelander. I would just have to take my best best guess of what I think is best. Yeah. No. L- luckily, like I sl- luckily, top eight Icelander is gone, so you didn't really have to worry about that after there. Um, so both of the streamed games. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about the the semis and the finals games. So those were both both streamed. And okay. You were, mm-hmm. you were part of both of those. So couple couple things. Uh, a little bit more specifically. So you you. <laughs> When you talk about psycho aggro, now I'm talking about I'm thinking of your Goliath Gauntlet popping super super early. Pretty much, it's pretty much as soon <laughs> as you can. What is what is what it kind of looked to be? Uh, is it kind of like to set up your your life lead a little bit earlier on to like take tempo and keep tempo, or kind of just mm. play it? Uh, I noticed your your play was like very often. I think I saw it like at least two times. It was the Goliath into the combustible for eight. Uh, with the right. Teclo Pounder, of course, to like come in for eight, that mm-hmm. really weird block point. I I think unless like the other deck has two block armor that they're willingly like willing to give up and like two three blocks, it is like quite difficult to block it. Was that kind of the intention that you want to get like that free value, yeah. like the free value off like the plus three, or was there kind of something else in play? Yeah, there there are a few decision rules that I feel like I have for that Goliath Gauntlet. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it is the uh, best decision choice. matrix. Uh, please, please print. Please, please, please print something <laughs> for us. Uh, but yes. Uh, anyway, uh, first priority I feel like is is if I have a techo pounder, I just pop it as soon as I see a red combustible, mm. which is the only combustible I run anyway. Just because uh, it punishes them if they don't block it, or they give me their hand, and then their hand is, their turn is really weak, and then I I will have tempo. Um, mm. If I can't get that, then you know. The closer it gets to the end of the game, I just pop it on any two attack that I can get my hands on. Uh, but if okay. it, you know, uh, it's nice to get it on a payload if I can. It's nice mm. to get a max, maximum velocity if I can. Right. But uh, the later it gets, I'll probably just pop it on anything because uh, yeah. I don't want to be stuck at the end of the game without having to use it. Uh, I have right. 12, 12 two attacks, I believe. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry, that's red, and and I have three yellows, three throttles, and then oh, I, yeah. I don't really want to use it on a blue throttle. So that's fair. <laughs> no, fair enough. Okay, yeah. so it's a combustible courier, but then later on, the, it's mainly just like two co- uh, two cost reds yeah. would be ideal. Okay. Yeah, that kind of, it's that just, kind of makes sense. Yeah, the yeah. high rolling is a is an eight attack combustible courier, yeah. which yeah, I high rolled and I did it twice. So yeah, and uh, it's, very it's the good. only on hit as well, right? From your two attack card, so it makes sense to pump that yeah. one to guarantee or to make it more likely yeah. you're going to get that on hit for three extra damage, making it effectively eleven yeah. damage, right? So. Uh, yeah. What one of my favorite responses if they ask me if I'm an on hit is like my response is just damage. Yeah, my yeah. on hit is damage. On hit, on hit you take damage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's all I got. <laughs> yep. Makes sense. No, it makes sense. Uh so in the so we're going into the semifinal match against Viscerai. Um as far as your sideboard choices, how do you kind of view the matchup as far as like the matchup goes and then what walk us kind of through your 
sideboard choices. It is a matchup we played on the channel a couple times, actually, from both sides. Mm -hmm. When uh, Everfest came out, we were kind of screwing around with like Disillusion Sphere, and it was back right. when like, OTK it, was a thing. It wasn't uh, aggro so, dash by any stretch. It, it was like, how do we maintain the dash. control package with the Dissolution Spheres? That's right, yeah. Yeah, so we, we, we kind of oh, experimented around with <laughs> yeah. uh, the like the back the back end, kind of seeing how good the the single jammer is, that kind single of thing. Single jammer too. But like, yeah. it, in, in your view, this is obviously a very different list, and there is no Skeleta, there is no OTK. So uh, a little bit more one-dimensional as far as the Viscera goes. So kind of walk us through that. Yeah, let me let me. I guess I I should talk a little bit about my sideboard before because it might just simplify mm -hmm, sure. things. Sure, sure, yeah, um, yeah. I I rather for for this deck I like to view it that there's only a one card sideboard and that's that Viziotronic for 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 uh, wizard. <laughs> wizard. <laughs> yeah. Um. Otherwise, otherwise I like to think that I have submitted two decks and I just have to choose one deck or the other deck. So I right. either choose the control or I choose this uh, this aggro version. Uh, yeah. And so for that viscera, I I, they're, they're, I, uh, I don't know if you can see what, what what's like officially in the sideboard or anything, but uh, mm -hmm. there is like this core sixty uh, mm -hmm. with the, the five equipment, and and that's what I would take against that viscera and probably anything that I'm choosing to go the aggro package, like the that the other fourteen cards that's not that uh, physiotronic model, is the other deck, right? Okay, and they will all go in at once. It's either all fourteen of those or or none of them. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I think they they omitted the oh. actual sideboard choices in the uh, official okay. list. So when, yeah. once you get a Fab GB is... link, then you can put them in there. But for now, we can't tell. Uh, okay. I yeah, see. It's, it's, so so I, in I case it's that's... unclear, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So so in case it's unclear, uh, besides that Viziotronic, it was the it was the the pistol itself. Mm -hmm. It was the three sync fellows, three unmovables, reinforce the line, three induction chambers, three plasma purifiers. Ooh. Okay, I think yeah. that's fourteen. I think that's fourteen <laughs> with the pistol. Close, and... close, close. Three, enough. three, 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 two, one, one. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. I, so I gotta, so those are it. I gotta ask about the reinforce the line, the one of. I mean, oh. I, I know, I know the card. I've seen it before. Uh, is any reason that's not like a fate for seed, or is there like, is it against uh, like maybe like Bra Bravo or something? I guess you could run this, the reinforce. A, it's pretty there's good. There's a few reasons. Yeah, there's a few reasons. I think the the strongest reason that makes me look the best is. Uh, when I designed that sideboard, I was really just keeping Oldham in mind mm. or or uh, Bravo, and yes. and I just feel like I want like another unmovable that's red. Um, but I I don't know if you noticed, but I'm I'm a little bit attracted to certain types of cards, and that one could is the only one that could get a pummeled Command and Conquer ah. because it doesn't <laughs> oh, it's not a defense yeah. reaction. Yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. That makes sense. So it's a little greedy, and <laughs> I mean, it, there's a chance that it might, it might, it might, it might, it might be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I can understand. It could also be a fate for scene. Now, has it come uh, up in any of your? Too. Has it come up in any of your games where that card came out clutch? It has come up in games, but not during this event. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Fair. I would say, and and at that time, I might be running. I might have been. It was in the past, and I might have been running more than one <laughs> reinforce the line. <laughs> no, that's fair. But they okay. are very sad when it happens. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. really like I, I I totally get it. I like the card. Uh, I was like more in like ninja into like the guardian matchups it was something that like came up but i, I could definitely see it as like a way to get around it is not a d-react it's super punishable like, though it, it, it is true. punishable but it's very similar to like yeah. cards like oasis respite that you can just like add on to your defense essentially and not not have to worry about like, command and conquer for that regard but i it, it is definitely an interesting card so that that is that is good to know that there's like the the control board and the aggro board is a lot more simpler to decide you just kind of have one or the other uh so into so going back to the viscerai part so you cited an aggro clearly because i think uh mm -hmm. based based on what you were doing to the doing to the guy it was pretty like the race oh that was the control yeah. package <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, it's like uh, you should see the aggro package yeah, you should so, see the aggro so, package. Kind of, so kind of walk us through the how you see the matchup because you kind of told us already about the sideboards like how do, how do you feel about the viscerai matchup or maybe the rude blade matchup in general mm, one at a time mm, viscerai Ideally, I would like to go first, and okay. there's a reasonable chance that I can start off with an item, which I did on the second yep. game. Right. Uh, sorry, yep. on the quarterfinals games, right? Yep. Um, once that happens, I feel like what usually happens is the Viscerai would 
We'll try to use three out of their four cards, so not a really strong attack arsenal and try to go five next time. Right. And then once that happens, I take maybe not too much. Uh, I would have a five card hand, and then that's, and if I have like a techo core, then uh, then you start to fall behind. Right. And mm -hmm. and that is like the the dream plan. I think I think on average I feel like I would do better more often than not. Um, I feel like I've I've won more Viscera games than I've lost, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of like race I think is a little bit more favored towards me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, what about the I guess the the Briar is what you found in the. Um... In the finals, right? So, of course, there was four Briars. Very... There, there's a chance you would see him, see another one later on in the finals. So you just you did end up seeing one. Uh, how do you feel about Briar? Yeah, uh, it's actually quite similar. I think Briar has the potential to hit a lot harder. It really depends on that, of course, Channel Mount Heroic, as, as yeah. people might expect. That, that is actually how I lost my one CC game. It mm. was... Uh, uh, it was maybe it was probably it was probably my fault. Yeah, I would say looking back into it, it was a channel amount of heroic. There were a few snatches that had go again. I had maximum velocity already planned. Uh, yeah. I didn't want to block because I already had maximum velocity. It was going to kill you if you don't if I don't die this turn. And then it, I did, I had to block with something, and then it was uh, it didn't go so well past that. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think I think the idea is like. Um, if, if, if I was able to go first and I get a five card hand first, it's uh, you maybe have two or three turns to find that card and turn things around. Otherwise, I don't think that your your typical hand would be able to out damage a dash's hand. Mm -hmm. um, so so it's just really seeing that can you can you have you lived long enough to to hold on to a channel mount heroic with a, like a full hand or as close as you can to, to right. come back from it? Because usually, if you don't, then I think you you start to fall behind. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that can also play into that... why Goliath Gauntlet comes out so early as well, because the higher life lead that you do have, the more likely it is they won't be able to keep on or keep hold of their channel Mount Heroic with an Earth card or you know doing some setup right because they just can't afford it anymore. Mm -hmm. I think I think you saw a few channel Mount Heroics being yeah. used to block because right. it was a little too late at that point. Yeah, yeah, uh, and you really do need to get them early. So, yeah, I feel like it's just like you're you're you yeah, so much so much damage with that card, right? If you don't get them early, then you're just trying to clock them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, rune blades don't do so well when they get down to I believe two cards. Two mm -hmm. cards is okay, right? But yeah. once they start having to lose them, then it's <laughs> then it's yeah. it's getting bleak on them. Yep. 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 Nope, that makes sense. So in the game against, so still, still kind of on the viscera, you use the mm -hmm. the Achilles accelerator. I think you're probably the most aggressive person with the accelerator <laughs> I've ever seen on stream. I don't see a lot of dash on stream. I'll be honest here with yeah. you. The last couple of seasons, so there's a caveat to to, to say there. But I I know you did Funny. use the accelerators early, so that is like yeah. your source of AB one. Obviously, you're not blocking a lot with your AB one, so there's also that, right? But like, can you kind of walk me through that that kind of play i think it was i think it was on the items uh, it was on the tech book or if i recall correctly. i think i think i played it i think i played it after a spark of genius but i had like one yeah. resource and right. two cards in hand like i was yeah. i think at that point i was trying to see like what would i draw off the spark of genius mm -hmm. and then at that stage of the game right even though it seems early like i know i can trade in that 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 ab1 to really just get ahead and once I get really ahead, I don't think I don't feel like I care about your mixed damage anymore. I'm just going to take everything mm. and then make mm -hmm. you have to discard. Because um, then after, after after that point, if you get me down to one, I probably bricked or something, and and you deserve to win anyway. So yeah. so I didn't That's really fair. care about defense at that point. I, I was trading that boots for what was probably maybe like eight damage or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I definitely saw it off the spark. I can't remember <laughs> exactly what I did. I, I definitely like probably played a card. Maybe I even tell a short after that. I don't know. I think that was yeah, it. I think you, yeah. I think you boosted, that's, that's... you got the draw off spark, you did it and you boosted again and then you tell shard because you got the pitch for the last card. So you had to, you had, um, that was probably I around like eight zipper, damage. I, I, I think it was like a zipper hit tell or something along those lines. Yeah. Right. That's what I, that's what I really have that accel uh, Achilles accelerator for is, is, is for. Uh, a play like that. Uh, it's not really to block Arcane, so then they, I turn off their meet and greets. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm really hoping to have gone way ahead before that happens mm -hmm. or becomes yeah. relevant. That makes sense. Yeah, oh. there was also like consuming volition that came out at some point as well. But I think by then yeah. you were happy to block with the Foundry Heart plus a card, then keep tempo after that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, was able to, I think I was able to just give up one card to stop that. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, happy to throw it because who knows how often I'll get hit later anyway. Yeah, and that was probably the only, only on hit you really worried about pretty much. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Okay, so now we're moving on a little bit to the final. So this is against the Briar. So maximum velocity. Uh, everyone thinks it's a meme card, right? But like in reality, it's a, it's a it's a big boy. You it's showed them. Boy, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. Is so it, you. It's a card. <laughs> everyone thinks it's just a popper, <laughs> but you you showed them wrong, right? So tell how do how do you like maximum velocity? Obviously, in my view, it's like one of those real greed cards, right? Because you do need a lot to get off. And then the minute you start, as you mentioned, the minute you start blocking, because you have maximum velocity, yeah. it could turn sideways. So kind of tell me more <laughs> about like why, why maybe a little bit about why you included it and what how you kind of play around it during different games. There, there are there are multiple reasons why I include maximum velocity. Um, Dash was my first deck. I didn't pick it for because I knew the rules of the game. Mm -hmm. I sticked with the deck because I looked through the Mechanologist cards and I saw Maximum Velocity and I thought, uh, this is the type of card that I must play. <laughs> and I don't care how, but I'm going to play it. Um, I don't... have. If you play Maximum Velocity, like you get all this happiness that just oh, comes. Rob, Rob has done it. Rob has done it again. Yeah, he's he's piece together the dream it, combo. It, Feels so good. No, nothing matters. You, you've already won. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that's why there's three of them. Yeah. Um, it's it's uh, I, I did I do feel like now, especially after Everfest came out, um, I, I am able to build this deck that is it does kind of consistently fired off. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't it doesn't break as often as I think people are think they it, it does. And mm -hmm. and if it does brick, um, it still blocks for three. Yeah. Uh, so so I feel like there's not a huge cost. Yeah, and, a and there's a very high cost. Popper ceiling. for Prism as well. If you play a Prism, you can pop their Heralds, mm -hmm. blocks for three. Um, also, you seem to be uh, tutoring out the um, Teclo Core pretty often with Spark of Genius. So the extra mana or resources to have uh, for, for quite a few turns at the beginning of the game that you had, I think drawing it would make it just, no matter what you draw as a boost card, unless you draw like three, two costs, right. um, pretty reliable to, to get it off, actually. Right, and I don't, and I don't run that many two costs. Like you don't see right. pedal to the metal or overloop. Yeah. they've been long gone. Yeah. Um, right. So, so if you have a Teclo core, and and you have blue, you have six resources. So you have four resources left for three cards that boost. Right. If any of them cost zero, it's now impossible Guaranteed. to to miss with two other boost cards. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the only other bricks would be another Spark of Genius, another Maximum mm -hmm. Velocity, a Payload, items, but right. your items like. <laughs> you need two items to, to really yeah. miss because you'll just pitch the other one. So, exactly. So, yeah. it's it's a little bit more safe than I think people give it credit for. But I but people say I'm running like weaker cards like T Bone or something. Mm. <laughs> That's a trade off. That's uh, a trade off. Yeah, you got a really nice. I remember the really yeah, nice uh, bases. Yeah. bases. Yeah, the, the triple T Bone. 10, I remember. 10, 12, whatever you want. I think you got oh, the, that, the, the that crown of Providence at the right, like first yeah, turn one, I think, uh, or turn two. <laughs> That's it's a weak card until, they, until they you hit them with three. Right. Oh, man, I was watching it a little bit later. Someone was showing it, uh, a link to the stream, and I was like, they were commenting on how quickly everyone's using their crown of Providence. And then the quarterfinals, like, I use mine turn turn two, and then the Viscera, I use the, the, the turn after. <laughs> yeah. And then the next one, you just turn, you use a turn zero. By force. They were, they were, we were dropping a lot of crowns. <laughs> yeah. So funny. Um, yeah, that was an interesting opening. Although... I would say, like, of course, I really start to try to get an item uh, into play, right? I have two yeah. two pounders, three cores, three sparks of genius. I'm really just looking for one of those eight cards. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really hope to get three T bones <laughs> or or maybe even four. Surprise. Oh man, if that fourth one was in there. <laughs> Goodbye tunic. I think at that <laughs> point. <laughs> uh, just just for TV, yeah. If yeah, that it was last good one content. Was a T bone that would have been that would have been interesting content, right? <laughs> No, fair enough. Uh, uh, alas, it was just a zero to sixty. Right. Too bad. You'll you'll take it. <laughs> um, I'll take it. I still have an arsenal. So the the last kind of main question we had was kind of when you have uh, the position. So mm -hmm. when the pounder's gone, so the counters are off the pounder. Talishar is gone. Uh, does your game plan kind of change at all, or is is it still kind of full steam ahead? Um. Uh it is kind of full steam ahead. At that point, I, I, I do try to assess what 
my opponent's trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, if they look like they're going to try to block either from the beginning or, or once uh, they've realized that this is how the state of the game is now, um, I, I might sometimes you know, pause if I think my deck is actually going to be a resource. Mm -hmm. um, I might you know, stop halfway of my attack just to save and just make sure I have an arsenal. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I trade in a tower shard so I can put an arsenal instead of playing that card. Um, yeah, a lot of hands, I would still be able to push damage. It's very unlikely that I'm going to burn through my four-card hand thinking that... And, and what ends up happening is I don't do any damage. Um, usually, right. they'll have to be playing defense reactions to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I, ha I have reasonable break points, so, so it does change a little bit. Usually, hopefully, by the pounder, like their life is not like at 30-something or 30. Like If they're in the right. teens or something, you just have to keep chipping away right. every turn. And then I think I think you slowly get there. Um, if they're not really pressuring you, like you you could slowly try to build up a maximum velocity or two. Uh, I have I have done it twice in one game uh, uh, during the Swiss round because I thought they were trying to fatigue me. So uh, so I was just like slowly waiting for it, kind of patient. Right. Fair enough. I mean that that kind of leads into the the very last question: Is is there anything you do to mitigate fatigue? Uh, because there is, I know I saw a lot of people are just like, why is it, why are these guys blocking? Like, why, right. what are they, why do they keep trying to trade? It's right. like, uh, a lot of people yeah. just kind of block away. Do you have a, do you do anything to mitigate it specifically? Or is that something you're expecting or, or how, how does that go? Mm -hmm. For me, I, I'm, I'm trying to detect it as soon as possible. Like, uh, if they've decided to race me, then I don't care about my deck size at all. Um. Uh, Every boost is free. My my deck has unlimited resources. If I if I smell fatigue uh, strats coming, uh, I do change up uh, how I burn cards off my deck differently. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I might be hunting for Teclo Pounders aggressively. Uh, I I am trying to probably always alternate between a five card hand and and a and a, and a turn that just tries to minimize how many cards you can so you can't hit me too hard. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll trade in my life to to try to get these five card <laughs> hands. Um, I, I usually, if I have a blue, I will ask, what can I do with three resources instead of four? Because because usually I just want to use my Teclo Foundry mm -hmm. heart. Uh, right. Anything to, to just kind of keep a little longer. I think you can slowly chip away. And eh, it kind of depends a little bit about what you're dealt to. Um, mm -hmm. So so I think I think the key thing is to try to realize it early. And then and then don't burn away cards if you don't think you're going to do any damage. Mm. That's a good one. Because because it doesn't matter. Like, especially with Talishar, it's like, if they're at one and you have no deck, it's over. They're at, yeah. they're at 40. And, I mean, if you're at 40 and they're at one and you have not even, like, I think even with a Teclo Pistol, I think it's still over. Mm. Um, but, right. yeah. Right. Um, yeah, if if okay. you're if they're at one, then it, it, that's too many. Nope, that's fair. Um, so that that was kind of all all we had. For you, uh, did you have any shout outs that you wanted to give to uh, I don't know, members of the community, anyone you met, anyone who helped you test, anything like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I've met so many people over the calling. Like, I don't want to go through any names. I've met so many people. Yeah. I don't want to forget someone. Uh, but they're all great. And I hope to see all in Thailand or, or I meet them back in, in wherever they're from Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Malaysia. Uh, also, shout out to James White, super cool guy. Yeah. Uh, I keep seeing him in every event. He just goes to them all and just stays <laughs> the whole time and talks to everybody uh, the whole time. And and you know, just coming from other trading card games is just not something that I always expect. Um, yeah. yeah. Also, my 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 team here um, and and world, uh, uh, George, um, Mr. Saran, Sean, they they all play the most with me. Puku. Uh, there, there are just four people here in Thailand that play with me. World even let me his crown of providence. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. which did so well. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, I, my, my deck's not anymore. very expensive. I don't need one anymore, but it was really nice that he let me. It did so much work. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. my deck's quite budget. Like, I don't have CNC or anything like that. So You don't need it. So thanks for letting <laughs> me that. That helped. Uh, I, don't, I don't like putting cards that can't boost. Yeah, yeah, that makes um, a lot of sense. So uh, that, that's just how I play it. Um, so, so yeah, awesome. uh, I love all you guys, uh, the community is great. It's been, it's been a wild two days. Um, uh, people are congratulating me, uh, all over the world now, let's yeah. say just from this. That's I mean, all these now we, we're, we're congratulating like, hey, you. We're, 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 we're in yeah, Canada. Yeah, so much. pretty far. <laughs> More. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got one small uh, question left for you. 
Wh- one yeah, last small I question. Hope. Are you going to go to Worlds? Uh, or do you know yet? <laughs> I, I, I don't know yet. Okay. Like, I, I understand that I have the invite. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You got time. Yeah. I have to decide. Yeah. Right. I, I am very interested to see what happens next weekend. Mm. Uh, that looks like it will be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Um, yeah, PT. Oh, yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, you can come back to your, you got a little, little home turf, a little come back to the US and just show everybody that you're superior. You left, you got stronger, you came back, you won. That's that right. would be, that would be the arc. That's the arc that you need, right? <laughs> uh, and you do it with Dash too. That's, I, that's, that's, that's what you got to do. Yeah. I think <laughs> I'm happy that people got entertained. I feel like they, that's what yeah. they got. Yeah. Oh, oh, I got, oh, I got entertained. Great sure. content. I, 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 yeah. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I had a good time playing it. I always have fun running that. Fantastic. Um, no, fair enough. Well, I appreciate your time, Jason. Hopefully, uh, everybody, all yeah. of our viewers, uh, got 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 a little something something out of that. Uh, if you guys like this kind of content, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions for Jason, uh, you can leave them in the comment section if you want. He may or may not see them, uh, but don't worry about that. Uh, and with that, from wherever you're watching in the world, have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Bye for now. Thank you.